Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to talk about uh, building websites for a business. So if you're doing any type of businesses uh, in these days, you probably have some type of presence online. Now it may be your own website or it may be just a cafe. It may be just a an address in Google, but most likely you're online somewhere. And uh, the reason that um, so many businesses are online is basically so customers can find them. That's probably the biggest reason. But the second reason is just awareness, right? So people know that the business exists and that way it can be found if, if you're looking for it. So think about um, if you were choosing a place to eat, um, you uh, let's say you're new to the town or you're in a place that you've never been before. Um, what are you probably going to do? Well, if you're if you're Korean, you probably go to neighbor blogs, look at cafes for, let's say, Chunchan and say, what's the best place to eat in Chunchan? And then whatever the first um, uh, hit that shows up in your search, whatever that is, if the reviews are good, you'll probably go there. Right. So that's actually how a lot of people um, make decisions now. And it's I guess it's perfectly a perfectly valid way to do it is to base your uh, decisions on what other people are saying. Um, the problem with that is that sometimes those posts are um, paid to be promoted, so you don't necessarily know that you're actually being marketed to or advertised to. But anyway, that's a, a whole other thing. We'll get into marketing and advertising later. Today, I want to talk about actually building the website or having a company uh, host your website. So um, what you're looking at on the screen is something called a Raspberry Pi, and this is a very, very small computer. If you if you were holding it, it's about the size of your cell phone or maybe even a little bit smaller. And this is a full server. You can run um, a website or even multiple websites off of this computer. Um, but what I really wanted to show you is a server, right? So you need to have a server if you want to host a web page and a server is basically just a computer. So this is a very small computer. Um, I think it costs about 30 to $50 um, and you can run them from your own house. Um, or let's say if you're a bigger company, well, let's try server rack. If you're a bigger company, then you'll have some sort of system like this. And basically if this loads up, can I get a clearer version maybe? Yeah. Okay. So in this one, um, uh, there's actually three server racks here and inside you can see these um, kind of uh, on the side. These are actually multiple computers or multiple servers running some service. So this entire server rack would maybe host, you know, hundreds or even thousands of websites or um, it might be a data center where all your data is located. Actually, in the center is probably some sort of network storage. And then these are probably hosting web services of some type. Um, other things are like batteries. And then I'm not sure what's over here. Right. So this would be like um, a server closet for a company. And Hallam University actually has server closets like this. Right. But a home user. So, for example, I have um, a Raspberry Pi running as a server at home. So I would be using something like this because I don't need more than this. I'm not running a lot of services or a lot of websites. OK, so um, my point with this is that a company needs some sort of um, computer hardware, computer hardware to host their website on. Now, what most companies, uh, what most at least small businesses do is get someone else to provide the hosting for you. So for example, um, a lot of companies don't want to buy a computer and then set up the server software, set up the web server itself, um, create the web page themselves, uh, modify or uh, sorry, update the, the software, um, uh, make sure that it's secure so it doesn't get hacked. Like Companies don't want to take the time to do all of that administration, and it takes a lot. Like You have to have knowledge about how to ad administer a server to be able to manage it properly, and a lot of companies just don't want to deal with it. Really, all they want is their name on the internet somewhere so people can find them, right? So what a lot of um, companies do is pay other or pay or sometimes free. Um, they get other people's computers to host their website for them. So for example, Naver, Naver Cafe. Well, Naver Cafe runs on Naver's computers, 
right? So Naver has the servers, but you can create your own cafe. Now, Naver ba basically makes money off of hosting, and they also need more people to come to their website. Um, and the more people that come, the more money they make, right? So it by hosting your cafe, it makes Naver more money. It makes people stay on their platform longer. Okay, so it's actually good for Naver. It is free for you, but it also makes them money. Your content makes them money. Okay, um, another way we can do it is by something called Amazon Web Services. So the cloud, a lot of small businesses or actually all businesses now are using um, some type of cloud service. Okay, one of the biggest ones is Amazon Web Services. So you might know Amazon from online book reseller. Um, just amazon.com, right? So where you can buy things, but one of their biggest services is providing cloud computing. Basically, they have a bunch of computer hardware that you can, um, rent time on. So whenever you use their computer hardware, you pay them, uh, for as much computing as you do. So for example, if I wanted to create a website, then that doesn't take very much computing at all. It doesn't usually take very much bandwidth. So I can host my website on Amazon Web Services um, for no money or almost no money. People can find me online and, um, you know, I don't have to have my own computer, right? So it's it's good for small businesses. It's good for Amazon because sometimes they make money off of it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so um, Amazon Web Services, Google um, has something very similar to Amazon Web Services where you can rent cloud service. Basically, what that is, is you're renting someone else's computer to run your own service. Okay. So, um, I, I might talk later a little bit more about Amazon web services and what you can actually do with it. There's a lot here. So you can see they have the categories, compute, storage, database, migration, network content, content delivery, um, just a lot of different things, even AR and VR. Uh, game development, like there's a lot of things you can do with Amazon Web Services. So I'll talk more about that um, later. But just for now, think of it like you're renting uh, somebody else's computer very cheaply. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, for a website, there's a lot of different um, things you can do. So this is actually my website at defer.science. Um, it's just a blog with some extra information. I just write mostly tutorials about how to do different things with digital forensics. Um, so just a website um, that just has whatever information the company wants on it. I don't have a company. It's just a personal thing. Okay. So in the website, I have information that's contact information because if I want people to be able to contact me. And then I have uh, basically the blogs or the stories that I've written and some videos that I've created and then links to like lecture files and things that I, whenever I give talks. So I want people to be able to access like lectures, my project information, research information, uh, current work, and then contact, right? That's all I want people to be basically be able to see about me. And that's what I put on the website. Now, there is a server in the background, and I'm using a free hosting service um, called actually GitHub, which I won't talk about today because it's a little bit complicated. But um yeah, I'm, I'm using somebody else's computer to be able to host my website. Okay. So I make the website and then I put it on that computer and then everyone can access it and it's free. Okay. Now the first thing you need whenever you're building a website is some sort of host or some sort of provider. Okay. So, um, if you just search in best, uh, web hosts of 2018, um, then you can get, for example, a lot of um, uh, hosting providers that are free or uh, very, very cheap um, to host your website. Most hosting providers for a single website are, are yeah, usually free these days uh, because storage is also very cheap. Okay, so there's a couple of them. So, for example, HostGator, DreamHost, Liquid Web Host, uh, HostWinds, TMD Hosting. Like all of these are basically just people that say, we will put your web page on our our servers for a certain amount of time or uh, let's say a certain amount of uh, service per month. So, so for example, if you were hosting videos from your website, then 
uh, basically you would use a lot of bandwidth very quickly if people are downloading those videos. So uh, free hosting providers would cut you off pretty quickly. They would basically say you're using too much space, so we're not going to let you host that much uh, on your on your computer. But if you're just hosting, for example, articles like text or pictures, um, relatively small pictures, then uh, most most websites are not going to um, uh, go over the limits that free hosts normally have. So if you built a, a blog for yourself, it definitely wouldn't go over. Um, speaking of blogging in Korea, there's also, if I can remember it, I think it's called brunch, brunch.com, com, ac.kr. Uh, gonna have to search it, but I think it's called Brunch, and I'm pretty sure it's ran by Naver as well. Brunch blog. Brunchographers. Korea? Yep, I don't know. In Korean, it's called brunch. So <laughs> I can't type Korean right now on this one, but, um, uh, yeah, they're just actually looking for brunch. So brunch is the blog platform. It's kind of like, um, uh, neighbor cafe. Let me go to neighbor cafe. It's kind of like neighbor cafe, except a little bit more, um, uh, personal. Like you can do your own personal stories and there's a little bit more information for you. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I think, I think everyone's probably fairly familiar with Naver Cafe. Brunch is something very, very similar. The problem with the platforms in Korea, though, um, is that, uh, they will take your content down if anyone requests it and they won't tell you. So, for example, I know, I know some people who had content on brunch that was not illegal, like nothing actually even bad, but somebody requested to brunch to take the articles down. And brunch remove the articles without telling the author. So, um, censorship on Korean platforms is really, really common. So if you don't want to be censored, um, go with something more. If you want to do like a, a blog or something, go with something like Facebook or uh, Blogger from Google. Uh, I used to be on Go Blogger. Go. Actually, I'm logged in right now. Yeah. So this is, this is blogger and it's fairly easy to make new posts and stuff like that. Anyway. So uh, it's just a, it's just a blogging platform. Now a blog is, is probably good enough for most companies, especially small businesses. They just need to post like small stories and things like that. Even if you go to global.halem.ac.kr, um, we're actually re, what's okay. We're actually redesigning this. So hopefully there'll be a lot more. Uh, usable information, but right now it's basically just kind of like a blog. So you can see, for example, that some of our um, students went to conferences, um, different things that we're trying to do, different news stories, right? So news stories about what happened in Halim. Okay. Um, but this is basically just a couple pages with uh, hopefully, hopefully useful information and then some uh, current stories, current news that's going on. And most small businesses don't really need much more than that. They just need like, where, how do you find this business? What services do we offer? And then what information is actually um, uh, what's going on in our company right now? So if you're trying to build, for example, a website for a small group, maybe this kind of page is, is more than what they need. Um, they need an easy way to update the content, not, um, not necessarily a very, very fancy site. Okay. So back to hosting. There's lots of different free hosting providers. And you can see, for example, they have, uh, uh, here they say WordPress hosting and WordPress is a type of blogging software. Um, so these free hosts can use WordPress hosting. Um, so then that way you can create your own blog on there for free, um, really, really easily. So one of the first things we have to do is find a host. Okay. Now I've already chosen, um, the host that we're going to use, um, because it's probably the easiest that I've, that I've found so far. Um, and I think most people have a Google account. Um, so we are going to use Google as our host. Okay. So Google has. Uh, a website called sites.google.com or a, not a website. It's a service. So Google sites, if you go to sites.google.com, 
then you should get a web page something like this where it says create a new site. Okay, so notice that I'm actually logged in right now. Um, if I create a new site, um, yeah, I'll, I'll do this in a second. But basically, from Google Sites, I can make a new web page that's available on the internet and anyone can search. Okay. Now there's a lot of benefits to this because Google is hosting it. Google is our hosting provider. So we can put any content we want on the web page, but Google takes care of all of the security, all of the updates, everything like that. Right. So as a small business, it makes a lot of sense because then you don't have to manage anything. You just have to update the content and updating content is relatively easy here. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll use the new sites. So if you go to sites.google.com and you log in uh, with your user account, then we can go to create. And then I want to create in new sites. So new sites, they're moving over and new sites is really, I think, very easy to use. Okay, so then this new site, uh, loading name, enter your title, your page title. There's a couple different options uh, on the right hand side. You can embed videos, calendar, map, uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets, forums. Uh, you can embed your own code. You can upload files, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, they, you can also make more pages and more themes, or you can choose from their themes that they have. Okay, so let's go ahead real quick and make a um, website. I'll call it Cool Site. Cool Site. Notice that the name of the website changed now. So Cool Site and uh, Awesome Cool Site. Awesome Cool Site. Okay. Now we can check um, whether it's a title, heading, subheading. We can kind of change the type of text. We can also add links or we can just delete it completely. Uh, we could upload an image. I don't know if I have any good images. Mm. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to upload it right now because I don't think I have anything interesting on this, on this system. Uh, and then header type. Uh, we could do title only or we can do large banner, which is more web 2.0 style or just a banner. Um, yeah, the banner looks good enough. Okay. Um, actually, I like the background, so I'll keep that background too. Um, so next, we want to add some element. Now I can just come down and right click or, or double click, sorry, double click anywhere on the page, and then we can add whatever we want. So for example, text. Um, maybe I want to say something about my awesome site is now online. Welcome to cool site. Please buy our product. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so um, let's say we want to do some styling. Maybe we want to make this bold or uh, just part part of the text bold, right? So you can actually, you don't really have to code anything. That's why I chose Google, Google sites. Um, and then is there any other options we can do here? Clear formatting, let's do center text. Okay, my awesome site is now online. Please buy, welcome to cool site, please buy our product. Great, okay. So now um, maybe I want to add a video. So I can just click on YouTube. I mean, it's Google, so they're going to use YouTube only. And then I'll search for my video. So for example, how to fuzzy hashing with uh, SSD select. Okay, now I've got an embedded video and I can just drag it. Yep, and then that's centered video. And then let's say we want to do another text and say you can find us at uh, one Hallam University Road, Chuncheon, South Korea. Okay. Right, but that's not really good enough. We need to do a little bit better than that. So let's add a map. Okay. Halim University. And then da ding. And then select. And then now we have a map entered. Right. And then I want to make the map actually go all the way over. So lined up there. 
So now we have our embedded map, and then, hmm, anything else? Let's see, calendar, nah, divider, yeah, I'll drag a divider in there. Okay, so here's the divider, I'll move that up, kind of divide our, our video from our other thing. And then and the only other one that I think I want to talk about is embedded. So, the link you'd like to embed, nah. So basically here with embedded, I can write my own HTML code. So just a test. So strong should make it look bold, should make the text hello look bold next. And and it doesn't show it. Yeah, okay. Maybe because I have ad blockers on or something. Yep. All right, so I'm just going to delete that. So let's go ahead then. Now I have my awesome cool site. I have some, some text and then I have uh, uh, a location where um, uh, people can find us. So now this site is not online yet. We haven't actually put the site online, but I do have um, uh, at least the first page complete. So um, actually, that reminds me before we go and actually publish it, I want to add another page. Okay, so I can go to pages. And then uh, you just click this plus sign. So page, um, instead of making a new page, I'm just going to link so we don't actually make another page and I'm going to do deferred. Uh, no, sorry, global. Hallam, uh, Hallam Global, Global Studies. And then link is https global.hallam.ac.kr. Okay, open a new tab. Yep, click done. Okay, and then notice now we have the home and Hallam Global Studies showed up automatically. So I could add another one. Uh, Not untitled page. I want to delete. Ah. New link, and then I'll do defer.science. Okay, and I'll talk about defer.science in a second when we talk about um, domain names. Okay. So now I have my awesome cool site linking and uh, linking to a, um, uh, a map. And then I have some other links at the top in our menu bar to um, some other websites. So now I can click publish. And then the website address, what do I want to call it? Uh, cool site. Cool site. And then the actual, oh, sorry, that one's already been taken. So cool site two. <laughs> Okay, so this is the link where people can actually find my site and then who can view my site? Anyone can see my site. I can also change this so only certain people can see my site, but I think uh, let's uh, not do that. All right, so anyone can see it and then re request public search engines to not display my site. If I'm running a business, I definitely want search engines to be able to find my site. If I'm not running a business, I probably just want my friends to find it. So I would uncheck that, um, but that's it. And then click publish. Okay, so now it's been successfully published. So we can go to uh, view published site. And then you can see sites.google.com slash view slash cool site two. Okay. And if we just type in cool site two, we should get to home and that's it. So this is the website that I just created. It took about, you know, five minutes or something. Um, and now if I was a business, I can point people at this domain. Okay. Um, so that's one way. We can also add a new web page or edit this page if we click the uh, pencil down in the corner whenever we're logged in. Of course, we're the only ones that can edit the page unless you give somebody else access to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then there's a couple other things we can do. Uh, so for example, for site analytics, 
Uh, you can add your Google Analytics tracking ID. You can sign up for Google Analytics and it will monitor how many people come to your site. And I'll talk about that in a second. And then um, Favicon actually shows up in the corner, um, uh, just represents your site. And yep, that's pretty much it. So there's not really a lot of options, but if you're just a business starting out that needs your your information online, that might be a pretty good way. So let's let's go back to this view publish site. Okay, so um, so without actually doing any code at all, we already got embedded video, we got embedded maps that we can that we can manipulate, we got video we can play, um, we got you know, pretty much everything that we need. Oh no. So we have everything we need, um, uh, to at least start the site and we have Google search, um, possible from our website. Okay. So if you're a, a, a small company, this might be more than enough. Now, the biggest problem that I have with this is that this URL is not very nice, right? We want to make it something, something else. We want to make it something more memorable. So if my name is cool site, if the, the company name is cool site, then I want to do something like coolsite.com, right? But I can't, uh, well, I, I, I might be able to do that. So what we can do is go to a hosting provider. So for example, um, uh, best, uh, domain, name provider. So a domain name provider lets you buy, let me see, a domain name provider lets you purchase domain names. So for example, the ratings here, so iPage apparently is one of them, Namecheap I've used before. So Namecheap and GoDaddy, I've used both of these to buy domain names. Now, what what we mean by buy domain names is that they are a registrar. So you purchase a domain name from one of these companies and then you pay usually a yearly fee. So for example, um, .com yearly is like $10. Um, sometimes. So actually we can go to, let's go to GoDaddy and let's buy a Korean domain. I think we can buy some Korean domains here. Okay. Yeah. So .kr is 12,000 per year. Now we can buy it for, you know, 10 years and then maybe get a little bit, a little bit of money off. So let's say I want to buy um, uh, taco.kr. I would be really surprised if that's available. So I'm searching for it now. It's going through. It's looking. Yep. Uh, and then taco.kr is available. It was 26,001. Now it's 12,001, right? So um, actually that's tacos, not taco. I want to see what. I hope this isn't a bad site. Taco.kr. If it's bad, I'm going to cut it. Uh, nothing. Okay, great. So it was something, but apparently it's not maintained. So tacos.kr is available for 12,000, taco.menu, tacoshop.kr. Like it will recommend other available um, domain names. Uh, yep. So there's a lot of different um, um, domains that you could buy. Now be a little bit careful because if you buy a domain name that's not really recognized, like uh, .menu, then if you make your web uh, your email, talk, uh, like Joshua at taco.menu, then a lot of people will not receive your email because they'll think that it's spam. So even my website, defer.science, um, you can email Joshua at defer.science, but whenever I try to email you back, it will probably go to your spam folder because dot science is kind of like an unrecognized, um, top level domain. So, um, yeah, that's just be aware that there's some problems like that. Okay. So, uh, we need to buy a domain. And then for Google, um, uh, Google doesn't really have a way to attach, uh, not an easy way to attach your website, this website we created to the domain. So you have to forward your domain to your Google site. And you can do that in GoDaddy if we were going to buy that. So, um, Again, you don't have to buy a domain. Do not buy a domain and say that your teacher told you to. Just um, be aware that a company probably wants to buy a domain because they want to type coolsite.com, not um, uh, sites.google.com slash view slash coolsite2, right? 
So if you expect your users to be able to type the website in, you want something that they can memorize. If you're just wanting to be online, well, maybe you don't need to buy a domain then. Okay. Yeah. So GoDaddy uh, and Namecheap, they have domains that you can purchase uh, usually yearly. Actually, all of these have domains you can purchase yearly. Um, and yeah, and then that's it. Uh, so that's for domains. And next I want to talk about um, one of the options was Google Analytics. So site analytics, and then you have to put in your analytics code. Well, I have, um, I use Google Search Console for uh, my website. You can see that it's going down because I haven't really been updating it lately. So nobody's viewing it. Um, so this is Google Search Console um, dashboard. And basically it lets you see how many people are going to your site and why are they going to your site. So this is my defer.science website. Um, so in the dashboard, I can already see it's going down, not getting as many hits per day because I don't update the content regularly, right? So a lot of the tutorials that I do are a little bit older. So um, they're popular for like a year or two years, but then as they get older and older, then people aren't searching for that anymore. So I need to write more basically is the, the issue here. Um, and then search appearance, uh, we can get a couple different options here. So in our search appearance, this is how um, people see our website. So Google has a lot of different options for how your website shows up whenever people search for it. Um, I'm going to sk skip these for now because it's a little bit complicated the way that they, they do this. And I'll go to search traffic. Search traffic is probably the most interesting because we can see why are people coming to our website. So under search analytics, we can see over the last, um, looks like few days, how many people actually clicked on our website and, and accessed our website. Okay. Um, and then all of this is coming from uh, Google search, not from Naver or anything like that. It's mostly coming from Google search. So these are all of the clicks from Google in the last, uh, I don't know how many days. Let's say this is the 22nd. This is 326. So for about the last month, right? So all of the activity over the last month. Now, uh, the interesting part is possibly how many people are, are contacting you, especially if your site is getting more and more popular. That would be really nice, but um, yeah, mine's not. <laughs> so uh, people were searching for, for example, John the Ripper zip, John the Ripper zip file, uh, rar, to, <laughs> rar to John, John crack zip. Um, all of these things you might think are a little bit uh, weird, but the reason that they're searching for this is because they want to be able to crack passwords. And I wrote a tutorial on how to use John the Ripper, which is a program to break passwords on zip files. So this is actually my most popular search term. People are really looking for um, John the Ripper cracking passwords. Okay. So 136 clicks, and that's way more than, than the next, the next ones. Okay. Um, I have one on SSD, which is fuzzy hashing for forensics and not too many clicks on that. Uh, forensic image of an Android phone, more John, more password cracking, password cracking, uh, forensics, password cracking, forensics, forensics, uh, password cracking. Yeah, so a lot of it, I mean, it's all just password cracking or forensics, which is what I would expect because that's what my website's about, right? It's everything I write is basically forensics or information security. So uh, password cracking is definitely the most popular, um, but that's it. So Search Console is a really interesting way to see what people are interested in who are coming to your website, right? So why did they actually click on your website? What were they looking for? So if I'm a company and I make kimbap and people are looking for chumchi kimbap, well, did they click on my site because of Chumchi Kimbap or did they search for like Chumchi Kimbap best Chunchan? Well, maybe I need to put more keywords in my website, something like best in Chunchan Chumchi Kimbap, and then more people might be able to find me. Okay, so search analytics is a really popular way to see how people are actually getting to your website and then links to your site. Um, these are just different ones that link back. Um, so yeah, a lot of different places and then where they're actually linking to. Yep. So just how people are linking your content, uh, internal links, 
manual actions I don't think I need. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. So whenever you use Search Console, you register your website and say, I want to, um, uh, I want to monitor this website and see how people are actually, um, um, accessing it or uh, how people, how are people interacting with my content? Um, so for a business, it's really, important if they want to be found they have to know how people are searching they can't just guess otherwise people won't be able to find you unless you're a really big company um, for for people or for search engines to be able to find your content they have to do indexing so in this google index you can see here that i switched domain names and um, indexing finished or most of my site was indexed basically last november right and that's about the time that i switched domain names so uh, indexing uh, is really important if you want to be found in search engines. Okay. So that's a little bit about uh, Search Console, seeing how people can actually come to your website um, and how to build at least a basic website. Um, yeah. So um, I'm going to have an assignment this week about um, obviously building some type of site. I don't expect you to buy a domain. I don't expect you to do use Search Console. Um, but if you do those things, it would be more possibly more interesting for you. So um, that's it today, basically for yeah, that's it today for um, uh, building a basic presence online for a company. Okay, so thank you very much.